Good evening, my fellow Singaporeans, voters, voters of Angmo Kyo GRC, voters of West Coast GRC, voters of Radin Mass SMC. This is our last rally. We've got all 11 candidates here tonight. But I'm going to focus on West Coast and Radin Mass. What we are going to do for you, how we are going to serve you, and why you should vote for us. Some of you will say that after four or five years, you still don't know us well enough. So the first thing I will urge you to do when you go home is to go to our website where you'll find our manifesto in full and other information. It's easy to remember the name reform.sg. We are what it says on the tin. Now you can write that down and type it into WhatsApp and send it to your friends. I don't know why you would write something down and then type it into WhatsApp, but hey, who am I to judge what Lee Sian Lung tells you to do? So each of the candidates has over the last eight days very ably dealt with the national issues, and they will continue to do that. But if I can just turn to West Coast and Radin Math for a minute, I just want to take this opportunity to praise my team and all the volunteers, the media and IT support team, the logistics, and also our treasurer who keeps us on an even keel. So, if the West Coast and Radin Mass candidates could stand up now and come over here. Please take a bow. Is there anybody here from West Coast? Thank you. So I said, we would run our town council like a tight ship. What does that mean? What's a tight ship? A ship is somewhere where everything has to be in its place, in good condition and well maintained. Sometimes you will need to steer it through stormy weather conditions. Workers' Party is in the news a lot now, but the real comparison is with SPP. They have had decades with no problem in town council management. We will run our town council with a ruthless control of costs. So the maximum amount of money is spent on your amenities and hopefully in reducing your service and conservancy charges. <clears throat> we won't be bringing our friends in to manage it. There will be checks on everything and we will make it transparent. The town council is not a cruise ship for our enjoyment. We have in the Reform Party family a renowned constitutional lawyer, Mr. Rabi. We have businessmen and women. We have Mr. Apabu in Radin Mass, who runs a construction company dealing with tens of millions of dollars. He can manage an estate. Each one of us individually brings talents to town council management, and we complement one another in our suite of talents. As for myself, I have a 30-year unblemished record of money management. I managed money for some of the largest institutions in the world. 
Lee Sian Lung can laugh and talk about hundreds of millions as though it's an amazing thing, but those are the sums I'm very used to dealing with. Believe me, if there was a blot on my resume, the PAP would have broadcast it everywhere by now. So what I can say is that you can trust us. We are not going to do anything radical. We are going to run a very safe tight ship which gives you what you want. If that makes me sound like a boring accountant, then good for you. I've chosen my team for their people and caring skills and their ability to run a good surgery. They've already told you a bit about themselves. I want to thank all the residents who have welcomed us back and given us such a warm welcome. We will have an open door policy and we will make a difference to your lives. So you all know who I am. A lot of people began to notice me when I took the government to court. I didn't do that to get noticed. I did it because I was sick of this government using up your money with no accountability. I was sick of them thinking they could be their own check. A check from you, perhaps. We have heard a lot from the PAP over the last few days about the opposition. So without wanting to put my colleague down, with all due respect, we are not opposition when it comes to the economy. We are the Reform Party. Why do I make a distinction? Because Mr. Lee, Mr. Tarman have been throwing some criticisms out there. Right now, I need to separate our, our ideas because there is a difference. The key differences are that we don't believe in punishing the top earners. We are more concerned with the bottom 20%, but also with the squeezed middle. Our manifesto is about raising everyone up, about raising the bottom so none can drop too far, about investing at the root in our people and improving the safety nets so not so many people fall, and when they do, the nets hold them. By the way, Tarman said he doesn't believe in safety nets. He believes in trampolines. Maybe they don't have trampolines where he lives, but these days trampolines come with safety nets around them. There is a reason for that. We put out a manifesto this week but obviously got the PAP rattled. So rattled, they broke their silence, and Mr. Isran himself tried to disparage it, but failed. I would have been more impressed by him if he had not told lies and called it ad hoc. Ad hoc, it's more or less the same manifesto we have had on our website in bullet points since 2011. We refined it, did more research, updated it and fleshed it out. It's a 12-page document containing over 100 proposals. Mr. Isuran <coughs> then called it seductive. A strange word, but we will take it as a compliment. Quite frankly, if a sound economic plan seduces you, then I'm worried for your sex life. <laughs> but let's think about that. The PAP tried to rip our plan apart, but all they could really do is call it names and then say that it was seductive. 
So it was a good plan. It's a better plan for fixing our economy than the PAP have. <laughs> Next, Ethan wanted to know how we would finance it. Mr. Lee waved his hands in the air and talked about hundreds of millions of dollars. I've never seen him so excited. Maybe he was thinking about his wife's salary. Dare I say he was quite seductive at that moment. <laughs> you know I took this government to court over the IMF loan. That is your money that they pledged away to the IMF to bail out Greece and other countries. And they promised this money away without telling Parliament first or getting the President's approval. So I took them to court because they broke the Constitution. Five billion dollars they gave away. That's hundreds of millions, but I'm not waving my hands about because I'm comfortable with large numbers. They don't get me excited unless it's money the government is losing or giving away, or money that is disappearing from our scrutiny. So I say we will finance this plan from the net investment returns contribution. How does that work? Well, the surplus by the government's own figures is about $25 billion, maybe as much as $32 billion annually. At the moment, the government puts about seven to eight billion annually into funds. It's not actually spent. So what happens to it? Well, when you go to a magic show, the magician brings out a white rabbit. Then he points to his lovely assistant, Sharon. She is wearing a bikini so she can seduce you better. Then he shows you the hat, and the rabbit has disappeared. Where is the rabbit? Is it in hiding in the hat? Has the magician put it up his sleeves? Is it behind his back? We don't know. It is no longer in plain sight. This is what happens to the money in the unaudited NIRC funds that are put into the funds. The difference with the magician's white rabbit is that it usually appears again at the end of the show unharmed. Do you think you are ever going to see your money again? Oh. Our plan is not financed by putting NIRC into funds, but by investing it in the citizens. From cradle to grave, health care, benefits to help with the costs of bringing up a child, pensions. The total cost is no higher. In fact, it's a good deal less than the amount put into funds currently. Our plan invests in our citizens so that the children of the children of JBJ supporters will have better health, better education, a better life, and be more productive. And there will be more of them in the future because our seductive plan will improve fertility rates too. Let's make no mistake here. Our plan doesn't involve touching the reserves. It doesn't go anywhere near the reserves. It uses the same amount, more or less equal to 50% of the net investment returns that this government hides away in funds. It's that simple. You bet it's seductive. Now, someone asked me the other day if I sleep well or have nightmares. I sleep well at night. I'm doing my best to do a good job. But yesterday, Ethan said something that sent a chill down my spine. 
I have lost sleep over it. He said, but if we return the CPF savings, if the PAP hand over your money to you at 55, then it would destabilize the system. It would put us, Singapore, in jeopardy. Have you ever been in a truly frightening situation? There's that point when your brain kicks in and you realize the trouble you are in. I told you before I got stabbed with a knife in London. Well, I was surrounded by some guys and one produced this knife. So I looked at the knife and at this point my brain wasn't functioning on all cylinders. So I look at the knife and I think that looks like a little knife. It can't do much harm. Okay, I'll tell you the truth. I was thinking it looked like a little oyster knife. I am Singaporean. Someone draws a knife on me. My first thought is, what can I eat with that? I refused to hand over my watch and then I got that feeling. Oh no, this is going to be bad. And at the same time, the knife was stuck in my face. It turns out a little knife can do a lot of damage. Who knew? So I got that feeling again when Ethan said that. Uh-oh, that sudden warning in your brain that this is going to be bad. Returning CPF at 55. That relatively small sum will destabilize the nation. Either he is telling an enormous lie or the money is not there. I think it's time we strip the magician and check what he's hiding up his sleeves or see whether, in fact, his arms are bare. <laughs> that feeling, that worry nagging at the back of your brain is something you develop an intuition for, working in the financial institutions of the world. That's how we spot a rogue trader. <coughs> it could be something as simple as returns which are consistently too good. Do you know in most financial institutions, they make you have holidays? Isn't that kind? No. You have no choice. It's in your contract. And when you are away for two weeks, someone comes in and sits down at your computer and takes apart everything you do. You don't get a chance to be your own check. They go through your books with a fine tooth comb, even if you are AAA rated. The more money you are making, the more they scrutinize you. No trader ever said, no need to check my books. I am making a lot of money so I can be my own check. So I began by seducing you and now I am frightening you. But it's not idle scaremongering. These are genuine doubts that come from my decades of experience. As I always say, if nothing is going on, then just show us the books. I do want you to go home and be worried, actually, and to think very carefully about who to vote for. My team will do a good job with your estate, with our surgeries, and I'll be asking the tough questions that no one else can in Parliament. On Friday, you have an important decision to make but also an exciting one. Let me tell you one last thing to help you decide. Mr. Lee says we are unique. We are a unicorn. A unicorn. Unicornly Sing Singapore. Does he even know that this is a fantasy creature? 
It's made up. It doesn't exist. Can you see a theme here? It's some fairy tales. This is a man with a magic cloak of invisibility, which he puts over the budget and the funds. This is a man who thinks being compared to a unicorn is a good thing. North Koreans and six-year-old children believe in unicorns also. <laughs> but not me. This week I met Minister Mr. Limeng Kyung in the market at West Coast. I think he is looking forward to retiring. Do you know what he said to me? He said, I am a good man. Secretly, I think he would vote for me if he could. <laughs> now, I'm sure he is a good man also. But if you vote for him, you are voting for Mr. Lee and the fantasy world that Mr. Lee inhabits. It's a choice between someone who is making increasingly worrying decisions and a capable, credible, genuine team with a very good plan and track record. Your choice is this. Do you vote for the man with the unicorn or for the man with a plan for a better life in the real world? You know it makes sense. Vote for a better tomorrow today. Vote for the Reform Party. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kevin.